Hello. As I sat down to write this week's meditation, the government had just announced that weddings would no longer be restricted to 30 people. Instead, it will be left up to the venue to decide what a safe and acceptable limit is on the number of people who can attend. And that's good news for those who still have plenty of time to arrange or rearrange carefully laid plans. But for those whose weddings are imminent, there may be too little time left to do anything now to enable longed for family and friends to join them at the happy event. But I guess that sudden changes in plans are now the norm for us as the pandemic continues. But that doesn't make them any less stressful or lessen our level of anxiety and disappointment. But it also doesn't stop us from making plans. Not that there's anything wrong in principle in making plans. They give us a sense of shape and direction to our lives. But if the last 15 months or so have taught us anything, it's that as human beings, our sight is limited. Unlike God, we don't know the end from the beginning. And that means that whenever we make plans, there are things that we aren't seeing because we don't have the big picture. God does. And yet many of us continue to make our plans without reference to the one who could guide us on the straight path or sustain us when our carefully laid plans fall flat. Why do we do that? Well, before we look at the answer to that question, let me read Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron and you will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the law with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son or he will be angry and your way will lead to your destruction, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Now, before I read today's psalm, I asked the question, why? Why do we ignore God when making our plans? Well, our psalm begins with the very same question but it takes it a step further. It's not simply that we ignore God when making our plans. Our problem goes much deeper than that. The fact is that our default human position is that we want to take God out of the equation altogether. We don't want his interference in any part of our lives because we wrongly believe that we are chained and shackled by God. Now, we may not put it in those terms, but the psalmist pulls no punches. When we choose to ignore God, when we leave him out of our plans and our schemes, then effectively we are demanding freedom from his rightful rule and reign. And we make things worse by drawing others into the delusion that we can break free from God's authority over us. 
the Bible calls this sin. Now, the psalmist talked about kings and rulers, but it's really referring to anyone who has power and influence. And that's much broader than you think in this day and age. Today, that includes not just governments and heads of state, but those who report the news, those engaged in the media, our celebrities, bloggers and influencers of all kinds, as well as millions of ordinary people who share their opinions on social media in all its myriad forms. And what is God's response to our rebellion? The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at him. You see, the tragedy is that it's not God who loses out when we rebel. It's us. There is always another side to freedom, and that is justice. We can't be free to do anything we want, to lay down our plea plans and schemes without reference to others, because our choices will always impact on someone or something else. Most importantly of all, our choices impact on our relationship with God himself. And one day, we'll all be held accountable for them. We think of freedom in terms of being able to make our own choices, being free to govern our own lives, being in control of any and all circumstances. But if the past 15 months have shown us, we are not in control. Coronavirus was not in our plans. It's a consequence of our fallen world, of our rebellion, right back at the beginning in the Garden of Eden. But God's answer to our rebellion is to set a king over us who will perfectly exercise the sovereign rule of God on earth, who brings the kingdom of God to a rebellious world. He is a king unlike any other a son in the likeness of his father, Jesus Christ, God's own son. This king is able to speak to God and know that God will hear and answer. He stands in front of God's throne to pray for the world. And God invites this king to pray for the world, to pray that all nations and peoples will come under his sovereign sway, to pray that our rebellious hearts will be subdued under his just and perfect rule. Jesus chose to take up his kingship by laying down his life for the sake of the world. He claimed its inheritance by dying for our sins so that we might not be judged for our rebellion. He took up his life again and returned to our Father in heaven so that we could enter his kingdom and become his people forever. Whether or not we accept it, Jesus Christ is ruling and reigning over all creation. The earth is his inheritance and his possession. He has the authority and the power to deal with us as our rebellion deserves. And we are free to choose. But if we reject God and his chosen King, Jesus Christ, we miss out on all the blessings of his kingship. We will also have to accept the consequences of our rebellion. But the good news is that when we live as God intends for us to live, following the teachings of Jesus, taking hold of the new life freely given to us by his death and resurrection, then we enjoy the many blessings he also intends for us. As the psalmist tells us, Blessed are all who take refuge in him. God has installed his king on Zion. It's his son, Jesus. He is on the throne. He is with us. He's smiling. He's not anxious. 
let's take hold of him and ask him for his guidance every day in the choices we make, in the plans we lay, 